Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Krishnan Prashant, and I'm the senior advisor here at the Education USA Center in Chennai. First of all, thank you for taking your time to be here today at the American Center. And for those who are watching us virtually from wherever you are, thank you for joining us today. Today's session is going to be on uh, music, games, and film industry. So for that, we have three alumni from Full Sail University who are going to talk about their experience uh, about studying and probably living in the US. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Chinmay, who's going to talk about his experience on pursuing education on video games. Yep. Over to you, Chinmay. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, guys. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chinmay, Chinmay Purohit. Uh, I'm going to talk about games, video games, basically, not games. Uh, before I start, I'll give you guys a quick, quick recap on myself. So, born and brought up in Mumbai, I graduated with a normal B.Sc. degree. I did not want to do engineering, that's why I got a B.Sc. degree from the University of Mumbai. Uh, since I was a kid, I was into gaming and I knew I wanted to move abroad to get a degree in game design and game development. And that's the reason why I went abroad to, uh, I went to USA to Full Sail University to get my Masters of Science in game design. Uh, of all the universities in USA that I applied to, uh, the program at Full Sail attracted me the most for the simple reason that it was, along with game design, it was also including game production. Uh, for me, that was very, very important because it is the only university as of now, till now, worldwide, which provides you a degree which is kind of similar to an MBA in game design and game development. That's not available anywhere in the world except at Full Sail University. So. Uh, after I graduated from Full Sail, uh, I got an opportunity to work for this company called Iron Galaxy Studios where I worked on this uh, game called Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, I was one of the QA guys. I also had the uh, opportunity to work with this company called Warner Brothers Games and uh, I worked on this uh, the game called The Witcher 3 which went on to win Game of the Year in the year 2015. So yeah, I have been credited on that game as one of the usability guys. So yeah, going to Full Sail did help me a lot because the university gets you to those level. It gets you those connection and then once whatever it is up to you, what you do with those connections. So that's all about me. Uh, I moved back late last year because I wanted to start my own company in Mumbai. And I know for a fact that India is, is running ahead as far as gaming is concerned. The cost of development is quite less compared to any other country. And that's the reason why I started my own studio. So I have got the finances and it's, it's going quite well right now. So uh, without further ado, let's get into video games. Now, video games, the reason why I've added this line, a new career for millennials is because the traditionalists will not get into gaming. It is something that they might think about. They like it, it attracts them, it sounds very cool, but they won't do it. Why? Because as Indians, we are inclined to think that, okay, I'll get a normal engineering degree, I'll get an MBA, maybe in the future I'll join in as a manager, if it works out, if I get the opportunity, right? But millennials, the way the life is changing, the world is changing, gaming is becoming something very, very attractive to the millennials, to the newer generation, the ones which are studying right now, the ones which are in school, the ones who are in college right now, they want to work in the game industry because now this is a professional course. It's not something just kids do to pass time. It's nothing that, oh, he's just a boy, he's just playing video games. That's not it anymore. So uh, during the course of the presentation, I'll be exploring more about that as well. So a uh, quick history about the game industry. Uh, the Evolution of the game industry started in the 1970s. The first ever video game which was developed was called Pong. Uh, now, have you guys seen tennis? Anyone? Normal tennis, live tennis. It's going from here to here. They're just hitting the ball from here to there. That was the game in black and white. And back in the 70s, basically in the year 1972, it cost them around $800 to buy just one device with one screen to play that game. So that's how gaming started. So obviously not very financially vi viable in the 70s. I mean, I wasn't even born, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, basically, <laughs> uh, gaming was down because it wasn't something which was very attracted, uh, attractive and not very financially viable. However, as time passed, technology developed. The first game which actually did well, which succeeded, which got gaming back in was Space Inven uh, Invaders. Now, Space Inven uh, Invaders is that game, I think, 
the ones who are grown up who are about 25 <laughs> i'm addressing those you might have played these games on our old microsoft dos computers i played it on that you have that little spaceship which is firing lasers and then the sp- aliens look like spiders i don't know why but that's that's what the game was right those were aliens that we were trying to uh, uh fight and that that game introduced the arcade machines remember we had sonic etc so that is when that it brought in from from going from a normal pc which was 800 dollars to an arcade machine where you can put in just less a quarter i suppose or, or a penny and play games so financially it became viable it was available to the common man and in the uh, in the 1980s computer gaming took off now computers by computers as in the computers also had developed by then so it was what it was in 1972 compared to that in 80s it had changed a lot right and just to add it made space inv- invaders made 2 billion dollars in the year 1982 that was 9 years before i was born 2 billion dollars at that time so you can imagine 36 37 years ago I, i'm not good at math anyway uh <laughs> so going ahead towards the end of the 80s there was the game industry was generating more revenue than movies and the music industry combined now my friends will try to punch me tonight for saying this but that's actually true uh it's still true haha <laughs> uh, but yeah the game industry is is generating that level of revenue it's it's and it is be very careful about this it is not the it industry the it industry is totally separate gaming industry is its own entity it's not the same it's totally different right so just just want that to be clear uh later on obviously the nintendo systems were created super mario we all played it i always thought he was hitting it with his head but turns out it was his hand zoom karke dekho <laughs> i had to zoom literally zoom in to see it was he was never hitting it with his head it was his hand life and uh, also the game boy was launched i played a lot of tetris my dad had one he gave it to me it was quite old i broke it he broke me uh, uh, he beat me <laughs> in the sense you know how it goes in in parents come on uh so 90s when i was born that is when the playstation was born thank you sony the playstation changed the industry completely because prior to the 90s prior to the introduction of the playstation gaming was just pc and nintendo and nintendo wasn't easily available to everyone america obviously yes but everywhere else in the world not so easily so playstation changed that playstation was developed by obviously by sony an asian company it was available in the asian market and it was at the same time also spreading towards europe and towards australia which is a very big big market as of now so that's when gaming started changing completely uh and then again in the 2000s the mobiles came in i remember my dad used to play snake a lot and when i asked he said the battery was low but he basically was playing games he said oh i'm busy but no he was actually playing snake so uh, the gaming industry changed a lot uh, so which brings me to the different types of games uh, i'll go by this very quickly now there is pc gaming i think all of us over here have a pc right yes no no yes yes laptop maybe yes cell phone cell phone okay we'll get to that promise i swear is there somewhere so majority of us have used a pc the pc gaming was introduced as as i mentioned in the 90s and the pc games it started but it went down but it got back again in the mid 90s because of digital distribution what i mean by digital distribution is earlier we always had a cd buying a cd was a pain you have to go to the store in india there was piracy so i i honestly did not pay a lot of money i'll be very honest confession time yeah so uh, however which with digital distribution what happened was with with steam coming in steam by uh, valve is that uh, that's the uh, name of the company with steam coming in you can directly download the game so you use your credit card your debit card and directly download it instead of going and get, getting a hardware right you're getting a s- copy of it so you don't have to literally get out of your house you literally have to just click one button it's downloading and you're playing so that helped in changing the uh, pc gaming industry and at the same time the quality of the games and the quality of the pcs with gpus graphical processing units instead of cpus they came into the market and that helped that helped because the quality of the graphics in the games increased because earlier you have the console but with pc they introduced more power to it so if you ask a hardcore gamer 
I'll have everything. I have a PC which is worth more than ten thousand dollars because that's the amount of money I invested in it because I want to play those hardcore games at high quality. I have a PlayStation. I have a PC. Uh, I have a mobile. I have a tab. So the gamers will play at play all of these games. I also have an Alienware because sometimes I do travel and I need a laptop for that. Too heavy, not recommended. But Alienware is the leading gaming laptop. And also, just just a small annually the PC games just PC. This does not include uh, any console games. Does not include any mobile games. Just PC games are making thirty two point nine billion dollars. In revenue every year, and this is 2016. Couldn't get 2017 data. They haven't compiled it yet, so. Uh, which obviously brings us to console gaming. Now, console gaming, as I mentioned, was introduced in the 90s. It revolutionized revolutionized the industry because all you need is you just need a TV. You just connect it to it, and boom, you start playing. It comes obviously with a uh, with a controller or with a remote, as we call it. So that's how. Consoles helped in advancing the industry. They went through a slump when in the 2000s when the PCs were taking over, and mostly it is I think the PS3 to be blamed for that because Sony hadn't planned, and Microsoft launched Xbox 360, so that is when it was a bit a tricky time for the console industry. But they struck back in 2013 with the PS4, and it's it's ruling the industry ever since. And as as uh, I have mentioned that Sony's PlayStation 4. It's literally ruling the industry right now, as far as console gaming is concerned. And Xbox One is so far behind. I mean, it's it's not even funny anymore. It's that far behind. And again, as far as the revenue is concerned, just console games does not include PC, does not include mobile. Just the revenue generated from console games is thirty-four point six billion dollars, American. Which brings me to mobile gaming. Yes. Happy? Yes, very good. Okay, so the first mobile game was obviously Tetris, which was introduced back in 1994, followed by Snake in 1997. Remember, I said my dad never let me play that game. 97. As of now, the smartphone industry and the mobile game industry is generating more than 50 percent of the revenue for the gaming industry. It is more than PC gaming. It is more than console gaming. Why? Because Almost each and every one of us present over here or in this office has got a smartphone. And if you have a smartphone, you have an internet connection. If you have an internet connection, you have got games, whether you play it or not. But you have got games. Those games have got ads. Whether you play it or not, those ads will be played. They'll generate their revenue. So, mobile gaming is the thing right now. It is the in thing. This is where the actual money is right now. And then again, obviously, you can play it on the cloud, and there are various different things for for, for mobile gaming as well. Uh, which brings me to different uh, to the different genres of game. Now, there are so many genres. I'm just highlighting the major ones, not all of it, because then I'll get just you'll get bored. There's so many of them. So you got action games. Now, action games uh, could be Batman, Batman Arkham Knight, the game which I worked on. Uh, then there is action adventure. Where the character is jumping from one place to another. So, for example, The Witcher Three, again one of the games I worked on. Then there is adventure game. Uh, for example, this, uh, have you guys heard of this game called The Last of Us? Yes, Last of Us. That's <coughs> yes, of course you have. Uh, that's one of the adventure games. Uh, then there is strategy. Uh, Pac-Man. How many of you guys have played Pac-Man? Yes, the older ones have absolutely played it. Pa <laughs> <laughs> The elder ones, the experienced ones, have obviously played it. Pac-Man Pac is one of those games where you have to use a strategy. You cannot just randomly get into the game. You have to plan. Okay, initially, obviously, you'll go and you'll eat something and you'll die a few times. I'm not using that word in a negative way. That's just gameplay. You have to be sensitive. But yeah, so that's th those are the strategy games that we play. Followed by MMO. MMO is mass multiplayer online games. These are the worst kind of games. Personally, I don't like it because the online community is just horrible. I, I see, as a 26-year-old, I do not like a 13-year-old telling me that I am not very good at playing that game. <laughs> so that's these games are multiplayer games. You are playing it online. You need to have an internet connection. Mostly MMO games are on PC. So uh, any of you guys heard of League of Legends? Not you, other than you. League of Legends. Then there is Dota. That's quite famous in India. Those are MMO games, uh, followed by sports games. FIFA. 
FIFA, FIFA, I'll beat you all, but still FIFA and WWE, obviously. Uh, and RPGs. RPGs are role-play games where you play as a character, you play the role of a character. Now, keep in mind, gaming is not just entertainment. Gaming is interactive entertainment. When you watch a movie, it is a finished product that you've got and you're watching it, you're experiencing it. But with games, you are interacting with that finished products, right? You get an opportunity to play that product, to make it move, to control it the way you want it to, right? So those games are the RPG games. One of the prime examples of an RPG game would be Grand Theft Auto, GTA. I think all the youngsters have played it. Old people get traumatized, my dad did, but Grand, the Grand Theft Auto. And obviously medical games, this is something new which has been introduced just around four, five years ago. Quite boring, but very useful, especially in the States because uh, these are more towards the simulation part of it, where the, the learning do the doctors who are studying the surgeons they get a chance to play it online and experiment it but you're not costing a real life so you'll, it, you'll get a real life experience a, 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 a real time experience and you also don't kill someone so everyone wins and obviously kids games anything disney makes my kids i mean my nephew is 10 so i consider him to be a kid so anything disney makes anything which does not have violence in which the character does not die just the screen just blacks out and then he's happily back again kids games basically so these are the different genres of games which brings me to the gamers demographics now as i had mentioned towards the beginning of the presentation gaming is not just limited to kids and boys anymore that's changed that perception has changed completely so the average age of gamers is 35 years old nine years older than me so i still got time the average age of the game purchasers, by a game purchaser, as in the person who will go and purchase the game is 38. For example, my mom will buy the game, she won't play, she'll give it to me. So those are the game purchases, and that age is 38. Followed by the households which own a device used for playing video games is 65. Now keep in mind, this 65% is only PC and console. This does not include smartphones. Because smartphones, then it will be 100%. You can't use that as a statistic. And then households which own a device exclusively for playing video games is 48%. So half the world, almost, has got a device only for playing games. And it's obviously not for just one person, right? So uh, average number of years gamers have been playing, 13. <laughs> way more, <laughs> way more. But that's the average, let's put it that way. And genders. Now, 59% male but 41% female. It's getting there. It's not there yet where it is 50-50, everyone is playing games, but it is getting there. It's just a matter of time. We're 2018, by 2022 maybe, hopefully. Oh, where am I going? It's my bad. Go back. Okay, yes. The women gamers over 18 are more than the male gamers under 18. So there are more adult women playing games, video games, than kids or Basic, I'm calling them kids because they're below 18, that's all. Mere ko kuch problem. Okay, and uh, also women over the age of 35 as well as uh, the under, uh, under the age of 35 are also playing a lot of games. So it is not just targeted towards one specific age group that, okay, this game will be played by people in the age of 8 to 14. No, everyone plays it. It's a global market. It's not for one or two type of people, right? And obviously, 60% uh, of the video game purchases are men, because of course, and 40% are women. Again, 2022, we'll get there, we'll see. Now, I've worked in the game industry in various fields, because I needed a job to make money. Uh, but, uh, so which brings me to the different prospects which would be available if you join the game industry. There will be art. So the 2D artists, the 3D artists, there will be animation. My sister is an animator. She worked on this old Indian movie called Bhagmati made by ZTV back in the 90s. She's old, not me. So there's animation, obviously. That's ag again, one aspect of, of uh, one prospect in the game industry, one job prospect, followed by engineering. I have a bachelor's in computer science. I am the worst programmer in the world. I have no shame in accepting that, but I'm a certified Android developer. I had to do it. It's India. You have to do it. If you're not an engineer, you're 
yeah, never mind. Uh, so engineering, so software engineers for games. So the coding that you learn, C++, C Sharp, etc. The engineers who are learning that, those are the same coding languages which will be implemented in the video games. There's nothing new, just that what you create will be much more interesting and visually pleasing also. Of course, games, obviously. Uh, sound and audio, my roommate back in the USA, he was the audio guy. So music, it's not just limited to movies and TV. Games also require a lot of music. And in fact, if in life, just, just a free advice, if you're ever down, just listen to any video game music. Just put it on because it is scientifically proven that it will motivate you. Video game music, it's actually true. Howard did that study, not me. Followed by quality assurance. I worked in quality assurance as well, by the way. My first job at Ant Galaxy when I worked on Batman, quality assurance, QA, testing. It's, it gets boring after the first six months, but still it pays the bills. Uh, followed by product marketing. Marketing is super important. Because if you don't know what you are going to sell, then no one is going to buy it. So product marketing, which also I have worked on, and that's the reason for this. Because no time for gym, man, I was traveling. And project management, which is what I enjoy doing. Because as a project manager, you have information about all of this. And honestly, full sale, going to full sale helped me with that. Because game design and game production, full sale took care of all of it. Uh, now there are the top schools for uh, for gaming. Now different aspects of gaming. Obviously, please Google it. I'm not going to Google it. There's obviously full sale. I went to. It's on the top. First of it is cheap, right? Secondly, it's a really good damn school, man. Really good. You'll make the top connections. You'll have the top people coming to you. The top companies coming coming to you. Just have to go and network. Talk to them. What's the worst thing that can happen? They'll just say no. Doesn't cost you money. Network, man. Uh, obviously, there's University of Southern California, which my father said, I will sell your kidneys, still I won't be able to pay for it. Uh, RIT, if you want to get into game programming, RIT is the top school. Uh, NYU, because it's sound school, but they also have a very decent uh, gaming program. It's true, man. Yeah. Uh, University of Utah is in, in, is in uh, game design. University of Central Florida, just six miles from Full Sail University, actually, in Orlando itself. They have a very good program for, for game engineering as well. Uh, DigiPen for art and University of Texas again for game design. So these are the few top u universities in the United States for gaming, right? So think about it, think what you want to do, and then obviously these are the few. There are a lot more, right? And uh, which brings me to the future of gaming. This is the end of my presentation, so I'm not going to bore you much. Future of gaming. So as of now, we have got. Oui. Wasn't me. Break. Technical issues. Don't mind. Oh, never mind. It's back. Thank you. Virtual reality. The VR headsets. You seen those? Oculus was the first one to introduce it. If you are scared of horror, the just horror games, never play that game. I did, I fell off a chair. They laughed at me for six months after that at my university. So be very careful when you use the virtual reality headset. Uh, in fact, Ubisoft right now is making a bunch of games on, on VR and virtual reality. Uh, check those out. And in fact, uh, even they even have, uh, Warner Bros have made a game on Batman as well on virtual reality. So if you are into VR gaming, it gives you a headache after the first one hour, but it's still there. Uh, followed by Twitch. Twitch is basically, I'll be playing the game, I'll be streaming it online, people are watching me playing the game. But those people make more than two, three hundred million dollars a year for endorsements, etc, etc. So there'll be some guy who is playing the game in a very horrible way, but he'll be smoking some brand of cigarette, boom, you're making a million dollars. So Twitch is again, one part of gaming where you're playing the game, people are just watching you, you're doing brand endorsements, money. Followed by esports. Esports is basically competitions for Counter-Strike, for FIFA and other such games. And again, the prize money goes up to around $500 million. More as of now, right now in the Asian markets towards Japan and China, eventually getting to the USA as well. And obviously, social mobile gaming. So before moving to India, I was working for a casino games company. I haven't featured that because that technically gets into gambling industry, not into the gaming industry. And I was working in the 
casino games industry Europe as of now so in USA gambling is only legal in casinos but in Europe you can play a casino game or slot machine game on your phone and that's what social mobile gaming is and that's also as of now coming into the gaming feature so these are the future of gaming it will change there will be something totally new I don't know we'll be here we'll have a look thank you How do we get rid of this? I don't know what to do. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're sorry about the technical difficulty. While we take care of that, what I am going to do is I'm going to invite Ashwin here to quickly introduce about himself and a little bit, uh, give, give us a little bit of background about what we studied and uh, share us about what you are going to talk to us. Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon, how's everybody doing? Good? Okay, so I'm Ashwin Nayak uh, born and brought up in Chennai, so I think I'm Chennai, this is where I'm from. I don't have the slide, so I forget what I do and what I've done, <laughs> I was counting on the slide. But anyways, um, so I graduated out of uh, Full Sail, Full Sail University, Florida uh, in 2013, so not too long ago. So I've been in the industry for what, four, five years. Uh, these guys have bigger credits than me, so <laughs> pardon me. So I've, I'm a music composer uh, and a music producer for Indian films and uh, producer for a uh, lot of artists internationally. Uh, some of the projects that I've worked on include uh, Yadimar Ginendrai, Vidhi Madhi Ulta. If you've heard of the movies, if, you've, if you're from here, you would have heard of the movies. So I was a composer for them. and. So full sale. So let's let's get that out of the way. First and foremost, um, I graduated. What um, I, I came out of school. Twelfth. Uh, I finished twelfth. I didn't know what to do. Uh, so this is the dilemma that everybody goes through. They start in eleventh, but I started only in twelfth. So I took my computer science uh, class in what eleven, twelve. Once I was done, I didn't know what to do. My parents didn't force me into engineering or uh, a regular medical degree. I was bad at math, 
was bad at physics. So the obvious thing to do would, would be to go into arts. And luckily I was good with music. Uh, my parents being the super cool Indian parents they were, they sent me to every uh, uh, music school there was uh, while I was growing up. So I knew pretty much all the top uh, teachers and all the top schools they were. So I finished my formal piano <coughs> learning and I did a small course in audio uh, from uh, uh, SAE, if you've heard of it. Uh, it's now changed to AAT Media. So I did a small course, diploma course, to see if I you know, had it in myself to do that course. So that was during 11th. That was a really eye-opening thing. So I urge more people to kind of do your uh, do a diploma or something when you are doing your 11th or 10th. Okay, so my slides here. <laughs> so uh, I urge you to do that. I, I haven't seen many people do that. So while you finish school, if you know you're not going to take your traditional degree. So if you're coming up or like if you're interested in films or games or uh, uh, music is what I'm going to talk about. I urge you to do a diploma or some kind of course on your side while you're studying. Um, that really opens your mind to whether you can, you're you able to do the course, are you really interested, and can you sustain the thing. So, uh, full sale. What, is full, what did full sale do to me? I went there and basically everything that I knew before that, that had to be erased, and I started fresh. Because that was a new place, new environment from India, an Indian kid, Chennai kid going to US. So a lot of you might have that question. So how was it really to go to the US and learn? So I go through the slides because I'm blanking out for four. So I'll just go through the slides and it will take me to where I want to go. So this is me, cool picture of me, uh, with with uh, in my studio. So I, I own my own studio. Uh, it's called Shimmer Studios. And I actually have a couple of buddies here, so from there, so shout out to them. So I graduated from Full Sail with a Bachelor of Science in Recording Arts. So I'm not a typical engineer, so I'm still, I'm uh, keeping up Chinmay's work. Yeah. So I'm not your typical engineer, I have a sound engineering degree. It has engineering, but I did Recording Arts. So uh, I own Shima Studios in Chennai. I have scored for these couple of films, Vidhi Madhi Ulta has not seen, Yad Magni Drai, Vidhi Madhi Ulta, and I'm a signed artist under Sony Music. Have, has anybody, you heard Sony Music? So I have released a lot of time for stuff in Sony and a lot more stuff is coming out, so just he, you know, tag me on Facebook or something, just keep in touch and you'll see. So that's me. Okay, so before you choose a musical career, I'm going to talk, so he's given you a, a history, Chinmay gave you a history of how, uh, you know, games evolved. I'm not going to do that because I don't know how music evolved. Music has been there from the time, you know, cavemen were, I don't know if monkeys sang or not. So, uh, let me just say music has been around for a long time, so if I have to break it down, it's going to take ages. So let me just say, dive right into it. So if you're interested in a career in music, what do you have to do? Primarily, listen to a wide variety of music. That explains it, actually. Uh, because right now, I get approached with music offers, or if I need to compose a song. If I know one genre of music, let's say jazz, I know jazz. I cannot do pop, I cannot do rock music. So, uh, listening to a wide variety, variety of music helps you, you know, to open your mind to what's out there. Learn an instrument, that's obvious. It helps your cognitive thinking, also to understand music. So if you want a career in music, let it be anything. Even if you are the person who writes music reviews, it's good that you know an instrument because you need to know what instrument is what and what instrument sounds like what. So that. Financial stability or part-time job or internship? Before. <laughs> so music is, is a tricky career. It's not for everybody. You need to have patience. So. Do you have the financial stability? Do you, are your parents going to be supportive? Because you you need a lot of support, financially and emotionally, from your parents or from anybody who is you know, taking care of you. Do you have to have a part-time job or an internship? It depends. I didn't have to do that or I didn't want to do that. 
be put in better words because I wanted to, you know, really learn. While I was at full sail, I really wanted to just this learn way? the ins and outs of music. I didn't. I wasn't really concerned about pocket. what I was going to earn in the pocket, uh, during college or after this college. Part. I just or wanted you to keep get more out of my That's education. So mm. I made that choice. Okay. So I, I did not do a part-time job or an internship, but I did have the offers right after. So always be open to that. Watch online videos to get an idea of what's out there. That's pretty much uh, a given. Just go to YouTube. If you like playing the piano, just put play piano guy playing piano. And you'll end up watching a lot so of good after So if you're yeah. if, if something really slide, excites you, then pursue. If it doesn't, you're going to get bored in the next one week. Move out to the regular degree and get a job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's yeah, going to test your patience a lot. Analyze trends and study business ideas. So I want you to do this before even choosing a career in music because you need to see what, what you're up against. You just can't tell everybody that you're a musician. You just, you're going to college to learn an instrument without knowing what you're going to face when you come back. You, you don't know how many musicians are there already in your locally you know, place. So you're up against a lot of competition, even me, if you're from here. So let's, uh, let's keep that straight. And find a specialized area of interest. So once you find out that you're really interested in music, find out what you're excited about. There are a lot of uh, avenues that you can uh, you can you know choose, which I'll get to in a bit, and pursue that. So next one. So this is careers in music. There's a lot. Can you can you guys see? There's like, there's like a lot. Um, these. Uh, so I'll start from the least of importance so that I can get through this faster. Music, music for health. Actually, did you know that music is, is uh, the health industry for music is actually booming? Uh, not many people have heard about it, but it is useful for a lot of cures. It uh, gets a lot coma patients through a lot of things. Uh, coma patients actually talk after uh, their thing, and they, they the recovery process is much better. Is what the study is. I'm not really sure because I haven't studied it thoroughly, but this is what I've heard. So this industry is currently booming. Hospitals, research, musical research is also big because people want to understand what is going to happen in the music industry next. That has a lot to do with the research of what we've already listened to. Most of the hits, uh, have you guys listened to Bruno Mars? Bruno Mars, have you heard of Uptown Funk? Of course. That song was basically an 80s classic, just redone for this generation. So this study, so basically a company like Sony Music calls up this artist, says, hey, there's this genre that nobody's doing, and it was really cool back then, like 90s disco. Everybody's listened to that track. Everybody, at least from my age group, has listened to that track. <laughs> there's some people lacking on so. Um, so certain trends, are coming back. So musical research is a big industry. Musical education, schools teaching, school cell university. Um, so teaching, you can be you can become a music teacher. You can teach people uh, music theory or just getting any anything that has to do with being a comp composition. I can teach music. Anybody can teach music, but you need to like get a business plan up to get that running. So schools teaching, that's one. Music, business and touring. So now I go there. Songwriting. So that is basically the easiest thing to get into uh, when you know music. Songwriting. Doing your own song. So now you can play a piano. You can play a guitar. Uh, you can play the violin. You're going to try doing your own songs. You're going to hum something and you want to play it. You're going to hum a uh, known tune and you want to play it. So this is where it all starts. A composition. And then there, there are a lot of you know small, 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 small things that you can do. So you can be a composer. You can be an artist. Artist is basically the person who's composing. So they give you a name for the product, so he becomes the artist. Singing, instrumentalist. You can do film, uh, film music, game music, TV, radio jingles, orchestra. Everything comes under just writing stuff. You can write music for so many different avenues. And then comes recording and producing. So everybody, does anybody understand how a uh, piece of music comes out. Uh, you all, you know, uh, now it's actually pretty common. People, you know, put up uh, videos of behind the scenes videos of certain songs. You see people inside the studios. They have uh, that console that I was sitting in front of. 
they have flashy lights and everybody's there. Music is actually not made there. <laughs> Music is actually made by just playing and mic microphones capturing. The lights have nothing to do with the actual musical performance other than altering the musical performance. So, uh, recording and producing. So, a lot of what I do is writing, but also when an artist, when somebody else, let's say you, comes to me saying, I have a piece that I've played on the piano, I want to make a song out of this. You can't just make a song without one instrument. You can, but it's not really appealing. So, how do you make something that you have into a song? That's where the producer in me comes in, the musical producer. Contrary to what Indians think, producer doesn't always put the money in. Let me make that clear. You make what the song is. You needn't exactly put money in. People pay you to produce your music. Okay. So you have a lot. Uh, recording engineers, mixing engineers, mastering engineers, sound design, DJ, radioing. Everybody has heard of a DJ. The DJ basically takes tracks that we do inside the studio and he makes money out of it. It's a very crude explanation, but that's what they're doing. There are no royalties based out of it, but it's a lucrative career. Uh, so many DJs have made it into the mainstream. Uh, people like Avicii, no, Avicii, not listen, no more. But uh, he was an insane DJ who became a songwriter post his DJing days. He just heard so much music, he put his own song. Out. And sound design for games. So let's say games and movies. Do you know all those sounds that you hear? Rain sounds in movies or let's say an alien spaceship going and crashing into a building. Has anybody actually listened to a spaceship going and crashing into a building? No, no, but that is a movie. Has anybody even seen a spaceship in reality crashing into a building? No. So how did the people of Independence Day or let's say uh, any alien movie for that matter, how did they get to that sound of that spaceship hitting the building? They never got to that sound. They just did one sound. They imagined that sound. They did it with something else. They crashed a car into a building or whatever. They just crashed a truck, a bus. They mangled a lot of sounds. They put together a lot of sounds and got one sound, which made the sound of that spaceship crashing into the building. So this is what sound design is. Making sounds for stuff that happens. So if I walk, this is the sound. But let's say I'm Bruce Willis. This is not going to get captured on camera. There's going to be another artist who's doing the footsteps for what Bruce Willis has done. This is what is called Foley. So this is a big thing with music. All this comes under music. So there are a lot of avenues you might not have heard of, but are very, 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 very interesting. Sound design is huge. Uh, mixing, uh, recording, mixing, mastering. So if somebody records the guitar that he's playing, it's called a recording engineer. If somebody, let's say there's a drum, there's drums, there's guitars. And there's this guy who says, let me bring down the drums, let me give more guitars. That, that guy is called the mixing guy. Mastering guy. Mastering guy just sits in a room, listens to your music, and you know, raises the level of music, finalizes the music, and gives it to you in a CD. So that's the mastering guy. There are a lot of you know, uh, engineering sides to music. And then there's performing, the obvious side. Uh, you can perform in bars, you can perform in concerts, you can perform uh, in radios. You can be cover bands. Cover bands are actually a big thing. I'm not a big fan of them, but they are a big thing. Uh, there's a lot of money in actually taking an original composition, uh, uh, let's say A.R. Rahman's composition. So he's made this composition from uh, Uire. Let's say Dilsi, the song Dilsi. And I do that song in my house with a piano with another girl singer, and I release that. That's called a cover song. Just making a copy of the original in my own way. And so many bands have made a big name out of it. If you've heard of piano guys, they make instrumental covers of all your original tracks and they are making a killing. So that's their cruise ships. Not many people know about this, but uh, you can actually be hired as a band or as a musician inside a cruise ship for like a period of six months to a year. That's a big avenue. Uh, you, you'll be away from your family, but uh, it's a great avenue, cruise ships. You are hired to be the jazz pianist or there's a band that you're performing with. Um, there are a lot of uh, plays or theater shows that have been put up that you have to do original music for. So cruise ships are a big thing. And then the business side of music, music, business, and touring. You can be a live sound technician. What does that mean? So when your band is playing, somebody here has to mix it. That's when the recording engineer, mixing engineer all come in. So when you're doing it in a live scenario, they become the live sound technician. Then music publishing. What is music publishing? You've made a song. You've made a song. 
So this is the publishing. So publishing as a whole manages all this. This this also comes under uh, record labels like Sony. They hire an artist. They hire, uh, let's say, they do all this research. What does this artist have to do to get where he has to get? So all this. So record labels. That's a big thing. Advertising, merchandising. How many people have been here to a live concert? You know, your live concert. How many of you have purchased the uh, t-shirts or uh, mugs or anything off the live back See, there. That is much better. You don't have to, but you're so attached to that one memory of that artist that you want that souvenir back home. So if there's a particular song that you like, let's say there's a Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. A lot of people have heard it. And if somebody sold me a t-shirt, I would buy that t-shirt because it reminds me of a phase where I heard that song and I love that song. So merchandising is, is a big avenue. Public relations is how you deal with artists. Artists can become cranky. If I'm not even food, I become cranky. And then I start yelling at the label. I'm like, there's no song coming up. That's this. And there's this guy who comes up with, let's say, full meals or biryani, you never know. And your, your tummy is full, and then you start writing again. So that's there. So public relations is a great avenue. It, it, it's not a chill job, as, as you think, because tantrums can get out of hand. Some people say the wrong stuff when they're presenting, let's say. And then all my PR have to go track the video, bring it down. It, it's a nightmare job, but it is a job. It's a lucrative job. You get to meet your celebrities in that job. So, OK, social media audience and future. What's the future in music? So we'll start with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Everybody has a profile? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Everybody manages it? Everybody puts out forwards? Don't. When I'm going onto your profile, if I'm your if I'm your boss, and I go onto your profile, and you have all these health tips, and uh, how this guy in China became big uh, by you know having no dollars or no money or anything, I, I'm not interested in that. I want to see content from you. Once in a while, it's fine. So clean up your profiles if you want a career in the entertainment industry. Clean up your uh, profiles. Have a simple, neat, professional looking profile. Have a good picture of yourself and not your neighbor or of an actor. You know, we've all seen a lot of the things fans being there on display pictures. Have that for the release days, change it back to your own uh, faces and you'll thank me later for that. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Why I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, laying emphasis on it is that is the medium where your fans connect with you. That is where you're actually going to tell them what kind of a person you are because not everybody is going to stand here Tell, tell people, hey, I've made a song by you. And you, not everybody's going to come here and interact with us. So that is always there. YouTube and other video platforms, everybody has gone to YouTube. You've seen a song. So people are going to watch you, discover you the same way. So YouTube and video, uh, YouTube is a big, other big platform. SoundCloud and audio platforms. SoundCloud is actually, they, there was a rumor that SoundCloud was closing. A lot of audio platforms are closing because audio music is not just a separate industry on its own. It is merging within the film and within the game industry as a whole. So don't just look at music. Keep, oh, uh, keep your ideas open. How do you merge with other platforms? SoundCloud is just an audio platform. You can put out your music. But is anybody interested in just listening to music anymore? No, you want a video with it. You want to see how a cat re responds to that video. You want interaction. You want communication with the product. So audio platforms are not the biggest thing, but they are. Now, once up, let's say after your education, there is actually a slide that I missed. But anyways, let me get to that first and finish up. Uh, why would you want to go to the US for music? That's a big question. That's also a question that a lot of people ask. I went to the US because I wanted a cultural shock. I basically wanted that in my system. I did not want the same traditions and values that I've been brought up with to come through the rest of my life. I wanted to learn something different. So I wanted to learn about a different culture. I wanted to mingle with different people. So uh, when I went to Pulse, I think my best friend, uh, 
The first cultural shock that I had was the friend that I met was gay. You basically, I wanted to get out of the comfort zone. So, when you go into the US, you're going to be thrown a different comfort zone. So, find it and make it your comfort zone. So, I'll come back to this. After you're done, demo reels, demo reels, obviously, you need demo reels to you know let everybody know what you've done, make it professional, make it clean, just do that. Audience keep changing, grow with the audience. You don't know what I like, I don't know what you like. I need to like find out what the other person like. He might like Bollywood music, I don't like Bollywood music. Uh, he might like uh, Punjabi music, he might somebody. I, I don't even know if I'm doing the right thing. Bollywood, Punjab, there are a lot of sub-genres that you will have to learn about. So learn, grow with the audience. Interacting with the audience is the biggest thing in the entertainment industry. You are not making stuff for your own. Please do not think at any point of life, whether you're an independent musician, independent filmmaker, you're making a product for the audience. There's an audience for it. You're going to show your mom and dad at least. You're not going to make something and keep it with, for yourself. If you if that's what the case is, you're not going to be, be paid for it. So you can do that as a hobby, but understand an audience, work towards an audience. Build an audience for yourself. Always look for new trends or next big thing. I, I, I wanted you to learn this before you join into music. I want you to do the same thing after. Look for the next big thing. Let's say Bruno Mars is big now. In two years, is he going to be the biggest one, biggest artist? Nobody knows. It's going to be another person. When Backstreet Boys came out in the 90s, nobody thought there would be any better music. I stand corrected. There's still no better music than Backstreet Boys. But you always have the next big artist. So learn. You can also be the next one. But you need to know the right audience to you know, pitch it to. Patience is key. Just like how you're sitting through this presentation. Patience is absolutely key. Um, you need a lot of it. You need emotional support from your parents. Parents need emotional support for themselves. I don't know from where they get it. <laughs> they need to get it. Their <laughs> sons or daughters will make it. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of time. And constant content uploading. Don't post pictures of your cat jumping out of your couch. Please. I've done with cat videos on YouTube. Uh, 